Hello from Team University of Pristina. My name is Vita Hassanen. I will be presenting our project for the IBM Watson Analytics Global Competition 2018 together with Edisa Mavrai, mentored by Dr. Blerim Reja. We will answer your questions at the end of this presentation. We would have loved to be present there in Shanghai with all of you. Nonetheless, this is the route we took, although not physically. In the following slides, we will give a short background on our country and the institution we are representing. Kosovo is a young country with an ancient history, rich culture, and delicious food. Pristina is the capital city of the youngest country in Europe, Kosovo, which is located in the southeast of the continent. Home to 200,000 people, including world famous artists Dua Lipa, Rita Ora, and Era Estrefe. University of Pristina is a public higher education institution located in Pristina, much older than the country itself, founded in 1970. Now, back to the topic of our choice, which is titled The Experiential Impact Assessment of relationship between CO2 emission, quantitative population numbers on arable surface area, with the main keywords being population, CO2 emission, arable land, and crops. We are increasingly interconnected. No city can wall itself off from the consequences of climate change. And no city can prevent catastrophic climate change on its own. This is a quote said by Ken Livingstone, the former mayor of London in 2007. This quote has a message. Its message is crucial in our analysis. That climate change affects everybody in such a dramatic way that we have to act today before it gets too late. Humankind's activities have been causing noticeable environmental changes, hereby harming their own welfare. Increasing population numbers demand for larger food production. The latter require enormous crop yields from arable lands. Industrialized agriculture was born, which apart from population, also caused excessive CO2 emission. The concepts are intertwined, Relationships are not clear, yet if one changes, it impacts the other. The scope of our project is global. The data sets which we have got from World Data Bank contain data for exactly 217 countries over the period of 56 years with 124 variables used whose data quality was at 60% and higher. This project's objective is to examine quantitative relationships between concepts. Those are population numbers, arable land productivity, which is measured in terms of crop index, and CO2 emission. Firstly, we examine the individual concepts for trends in the past and for their current state. Secondly, we examine 
two by two relationships of concepts. And finally, we do a three way concept examination. Population dashboard is shown on the screen. It consists of multiple visualizations. From the first graph, we see that over the years, urban population growth has always been higher than rural population growth. Also, from the other visualizations, the values for age dependency ratio are highest for the country of Sweden, Denmark, Hungary, etc. Meaning that the number of dependents aged from 0 to 14 and over the age of 65 to the total population aged 15 to 64 is highest for those countries. We continue with the emission dashboard. In here we clearly see that the United States and China are the top greenhouse gas emitters. Sadly, same holds true for CO2 emission. The trend of CO2 emission is always increasing. The summaries are shocking. Total greenhouse gas emission has risen for 88%, while CO2 emission has risen for 354%. Lost is crops dashboard. From the packed bubble visualizations, we find out that not necessarily countries with high values of arable surface land have high crop production. The outliers here are Singapore, Puerto Rico, and two others, which although have small surface land have the highest crop production amongst the other countries. Next, we are going to examine the mutual impact of concepts. The first one, as shown on the screen, is population in relationship with CO2 emission. From the inside shown, we see that countries with high urban population growth are more likely to emit larger amounts of CO2 gas. As followed, we have population in relationship with crops. Looking at the trends over the years, 1960 to 2015, we see a gradual increase. In this current insight, we see the cereal production, which is the specialization of crop production, also showing an increasing trend just as the previous one. Same holds true for crop production, but in this case, we notice something very interesting, that is the diminishing of outliers into the trends. The last relationship of two concepts that we are going to examine is emissions in relationships with crops. It is clearly indicated that the main drivers of arable land are combinations of two drivers, with the two having CO2 emission in common. This current visualization is of particular interest. Bubbles represent countries. Size 
represents CO2 emission, and the heat represents crop production. This visualization confirms that excessive CO2 emission damages crops, resulting in decreased crop production, which is present in the United States, Japan, Russian Federation, etc. But there's Singapore, which is an outlier. It has the highest crop production index and at the same time has controlled CO2 emission. This is our first visualization from our three-way analysis of concepts. It provides insights about the hidden relationships between population, emission, and crops. Trends show the higher the urbanization of a country alongside its CO2 emission causes a medium yield of crop production. One of the two outliers shown is Hong Kong, which, although has the highest urbanization rate, has one of the highest crop production index in the world. Consequently, we will summarize the increase in population, especially in urban areas, results in higher CO2 emission. The increase of population numbers results in alterations in food demands, thus obliging arable land productivity in terms of crop production. The excessive increase in CO2 emission results in decreasing of arable land productivity. To summarize, population numbers are proportional to CO2 emission. The latter impacts arable land productivity. However, a limit exists upon which CO2 emission contributes to a crop's productivity or damage. The beauty of this project lies in the con cognitive component of IBM Watson Analytics. It enabled us to draw same conclusions while analyzing the data as scientists from the agricultural fields did over the last years. Although we as students only analyzed the visualizations as we have no background on this field, yet our results were the same. This is a prime indicator that IBM Watson Analytics has a high accuracy level, which has the potential to get reliable outcomes simply by uploading a large amount of data into the tool. Based on the findings of this report and its resulting conclusions, we would like to advise policy-making institutions for the following recommendations. We recommend the implementation of public policies to restrict CO2 emission over 2,000 parts per million in land used to grow crops. We also recommend the implementation of public policies to manage the use of arable land by reinforcing construction permission laws. In order to motivate people, we would recommend these policy-making institutions to give incentives 
to individuals or companies for growing crops and greeneries. We recommend the development of support schemas for rural area inhabitants in order to make rural areas more attractive. And last but not least, we would recommend the launch of environmental awareness campaigns in regards to pollution by CO2 and GAG emission. In terms of future work, we at the University of Pristina pledge to suggest the use of IBM Watson Analytics and Bluemix APIs in several bachelor and master theses. We will also continue to encourage the use of Watson Analytics amongst our colleagues and faculty staff. And to finish it off, for next year's WAGC, Watson Analytics Global Competition, we are planning to develop this study much further. Next year's topic will be detailed investigation of greenhouse gas emission on nutritional value of crops. We as a team would like to express our gratitude to the people who have made possible our participation in this competition. A big thank you goes to the organizers of both this competition and of this conference for giving us a platform to present our months old work and for also facilitating our remote presentation. We would also like to thank Dr. Murthy Ralapalli for not only introducing us to this competition and for introducing us to IBM Watson, but also for his continued support and guidance throughout this entire project. We hope we made you proud. And last but not least, a big thank you goes to our mentors, Dr. Blenem Reja and Fato Spetze. A big thank you goes to all of you as well for your attention so far. We would gladly answer any possible questions.